the long weekend's over time to go back to work I kind of wanted another weekend right away that would have been nice <laughs> but it was a really good weekend I think we got a lot done it's time to go back to reality you know I'd do some truck and bring people their stuff gather all the freight we have around the area here so that our highway drivers can bring it wherever it needs to go around the continent I've been picking up a lot of freight like you guys have seen in my videos for Florida and California Texas a lot of freight go into the warmer areas wonder what we'll have to do today uh, the yard is full today must be a Monday it's gonna be busy here all week especially today well how was your Easter Oh, she's dirty. I didn't bring my pressure washer today, not yet. I wanted to uh, figure out where the water sources are around here and where I can wash it. And uh, probably bring it another day this week yet and spray her down either first thing in the morning or uh, probably after work, I'm thinking. The day will be a little warmer then. I don't really wanna get all wet when it's still kind of cold and chilly out in the morning and then start the day off all cold. But we'll figure it out. I also got a whole bunch of cleaning products I bought uh, this weekend that I brought with me. tight here today. Gonna check to see what's inside. We gotta deliver what's inside here. Oh! Huh. Oh! Wasn't expecting that. <laughs> There's a camper in here. Look at that. Okay, well the campers are coming off here. But uh, whatever's at the back over there, I'll have to go around to the back and check. The stuff at the back has got to be delivered into Winnipeg. So I'm just going to run that into the city, drop that off, come back here, drop these little campers off here in the yard, and then take this roll tight up to Arburg. I have another load coming out of there. Who knows where that one's going? It's been a lot of loads coming out of there recently. It's pretty cool. It's a nice run up there. I enjoy it. The last load I picked up there was going to uh, San Jose. We picked that up on my birthday last week. There's another one. What was that? You hear that? Got a nice vehicle out here. All right, so let's uh, close this up here. That is not how that closes. Man, how is this? So like that, like that. There we go. Okay, so already got the airlines hooked up there. Let's go and make sure that there's no uh, air leaks. Still gonna roll those up. Let's not forget that, okay? Remind me before I leave. Tires are inflated. That is awesome. They work so much better like that, like I usually say. Okay, so let's see what's at the back here. Why is this not done up? See, this is why you do your pre-trips on the trailers. That is supposed to be done up there. Okay, so there's this stuff here in the back that needs to go into Winnipeg. I'm gonna bring that and those campers. Okay, we got that hooked in there. We'll just pin that over there like that, pin that over there like that. Kind of interesting how the signals are on the inside, not the outside. I'm wondering if the actual signals are on the outside. That's weird, right? Usually the signals would be on the, the outside. I'm gonna test out my theory here right now. Turn off the hazards and put just the left turn signal on. I'm wondering if it's connected through the brake lights because on the tractor the brake lights and signal lights are the same lights. Let's check this out. Turn off that. Turn on the left signal. 
okay? Remember, let's not forget those. I usually do those first. <laughs> so the left signal's working here. Huh, <laughs> Nope. That's really weird. That's usually where the brake lights would go. Okay, so let's turn on the brake lights now and see which one of these are the brake lights. That's odd. Must be the way this trailer is wired. I mean, it still works, right? But pull the trailer brake. We gotta find a way to keep that pulled. Hmm, one sec, I'm gonna need a tarp strap. I have to figure this out. Grab one of these. Put some air in there. There we go. Pull that back there like that so that the brake is applied. Hook that in there. Hook that in there. We're going to turn the left turn signal on still. Okay, so the brake lights should be on now. You'll see here the brake light is on there and the left turn signal. See what it looks like in the back. Odd. You look at that, the brake lights are on the outside and the signals are on the inside. Huh. That's usually the opposite. I guess that's how this trailer is wired. I mean, it still does, still serves its purpose. It still does the job. Still working. I just haven't seen that before. <laughs> Have you seen that before? I mean, they're still serving its purpose, so I'm gonna say that's okay, but just a little different. I mean, that's not uncommon on passenger vehicles and other vehicles on the highway to have the brake lights the outside and the signals inside those as long as they're both on the right side and the left side is still clear what you're doing so when you put your signal on that it's still clear that you're gonna turn left or turn right and that the brake lights illuminate and it's clear that you got your brakes on and it does all of that just differently wired it's a different trailer okay so let's make sure we're hooked on And I did roll up the landing gear. Thank you for reminding me. I appreciate that. The yard is just full today. Lots of stuff going on here. The entire yard is just packed full of all these trailers blocking in other trailers. Nothing we can do about it, we just got so much going on. You just make do with what you got. Oh, and there's just tons of people packing up the space up here as well. Oh, they're sliding their axles right here in the driveway. That's okay, I could easily get past them if there wasn't traffic coming this way. <laughs> See what I mean? It's a busy yard. Okay, are you done here, bud, or should I go around you? You're backing up, okay. What are you doing? Okay, I see what you're doing here. Just packed. Oh, that's Roy. Oh, okay, I get it. Right, you're just adjusting the trailer. There you go. Beautiful. Let's get out of everybody's way. Get out of here. I'm just going to stop in at the office here and uh, pick up my paperwork yet because I, I still don't know where this load is going in Winnipeg, except that it's going into Transcona. So, 15 minutes up the road. And another day at Peter Mobile and finally begins. This is a 
regular week. Last week was a short week. I got a question for you though. Where you're at, do you get to have Easter Monday off as well? Because today's Easter Monday when I'm filming this, and it's not a stat holiday. Good Friday is a day off for us here in Manitoba. I think it's different depending on what part of Canada you're in. It's not all the same, it depends on the province. Just like in the US, uh, a lot of things depend on the states. Same thing up here. But up here we get Friday off, but we gotta come to work Monday. And I believe in order to get paid for the stat holiday, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you have to work the day before and the day after a long weekend. If you, uh, you know, call in sick, and take an extra long weekend, you don't get paid for that stat holiday. I guess that's how they get us to uh, come back to work after three days. I, I think that's a, a provincial rule. I'm not sure though. That's what I was always told though anyways. I've been told wrong things before. So I'm not 100% sure. Let's get ourselves on the highway here. Do some shifting.
This is one of the reasons I like the green rolled heights a lot better. The rentals, but it's still better than tarping, I guess. I still haven't remembered to pick up WZ40. There's a few more crates. So this here is what we call a strap roller. I know, very uh, original name, very clever. It rolls up straps and it just hooks onto the side of the trailer usually, but these roll tights don't have the same type of uh, edge to hook these onto. So I just hook them onto my headache rack there. I'll guard this thing with my life because it makes my life a whole lot easier. Some of them are custom made, but I know you can buy them at most trailer uh, trailer shops. Uh, I've got, I bought mine at, uh, where was it? Carrier Trailers or Great Dane Trailers in Calgary. Usually anywhere that makes and sells trailers. For some reason, that's where you can find those and you can buy them. I don't know how expensive they are. I don't remember exactly, but if you're looking for one, that's where I found mine. All my uh, all this wood is off of here. So, do you remember my ripped pair of jeans? Well, look at this. <laughs> all fixed. And these campers actually roll right off the back onto the dock. I've got one off already. This is how it gets tied in on the sides here. Those special straps and edges. Look how tiny this thing is. Little single axle. Can't do much in there. Whew, that smells strong like painting products or something. here while they load me first I've got to open the open the trailer up for them and let them know I'm here and then we'll have a two-hour drive back we can go home I'm going to bed early tonight I think for some reason I didn't sleep as good as I thought I did last night I don't know 
Maybe it's just Monday. It's probably just, it's just Monday. Come on, Josh. Drag yourself out. Time to go to work. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ugh. Let's open this thing up. You want to relieve the tension at the back first on these particular trailers before you unlatch it at the front. Just, it'll work better. It'll save you all kinds of problems. Uh, come around to the front here. Remember how those green rentals had the latches on here? Well, these blue ones that we have, have the latches on the inside. So you gotta take out this little pin here. And it unhooks on the inside right there. See that? How easy is this gonna roll open? I don't think this trailer likes me. So we got one stop on there now. Uh, it's going to Fontana, California. And now I've got to push this all the way to the front so that we can load the back. Alright, so this trailer is giving me problems. I need both sides to open, but they keep getting jammed. So I'm trying to devise a little device to help me out here. So yeah, hooking on to here and there and pulling back from the center with one strap, it worked. I mean, it's not perfect, but I'm gonna keep uh, working at this every day. Not necessarily using a load strap. Maybe I can find another rope to use, but it did work. So, uh, I don't know, I got lots of time. I'll continue to perfect this until I can get these things open, no problem, even when they're cranky like this one. Kind of missed that nice green one. Have I mentioned that yet? That one just like rolled open like butter. Just lightly push it forward and it just rolls forward. Thank you. Need some go-go juice. Top rep today, so don't gotta do it tomorrow. And I've seen your comments, those people who say, uh, what's up with all the IFTA stickers? I'll answer your question with a question. Why does it bother you? <laughs> I don't care. I didn't put them like that. I think it's kind of weird too, but it doesn't bother me enough to do anything about it. <laughs> Six hours, eh? Right on, I only need like one and a half. So you guys are worried about my IFTA stickers. I'm worried about this guy putting 
marked diesel into his Volkswagen Jetta beside me. Or is it a Volkswagen Golf? It's definitely farm purpose, right? Definitely. Volkswagen Golf, definitely a farm vehicle. Farm purposes, Mark Diesel, for sure. For sure. Almost every time I go to the pumps already at these car blocks where there's no attendance, almost every time I see someone putting Mark Diesel into a uh, passenger vehicle that is clearly not a farm vehicle. But what do I know? I'm not a farmer. Maybe it is used for farm purposes. Maybe it goes, maybe because he uses it to drive around his farm to go check on his crops. Maybe. What do I know? I'm just a little truck driver. I don't know. I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. Marked diesel is, uh, it's got a dye in it, so it looks purple. So they know that you're cheating if you put it in there. It's, uh, I think, I don't know if it's tax free, but it's definitely discounted diesel fuel for farm, uh, farm use. But you're not allowed to use it. It's for off-road use only and farm use only. I don't know if off-road, but farm use only. You're not supposed to put it in your uh, personal vehicle. But I catch a lot of you doing it. I see you. I see you. I won't tell. No worry, I won't tell. I'm no snitch. Okay, we need to find a, find a parking spot for this roll tight now. It's loaded, so we need to find a spot with the concrete for the landing gear. It was a fun day, pulling you around. But now I have to pass you off to the next driver. That load's going all the way to Fontana, California, like I was telling you before, so. A lot of freight for California and Florida. I'm telling you what. Man, I'd love to go there too. Lucky driver who gets to take it. All right. Washed the seat cover over the weekend and hadn't had a chance to put it in here yet. It's not a perfect fit. I don't think it was specifically made for this truck, but Not bad. Not bad. Looks nice. At least covers it up. I don't bring the dogs in here all the time, but when we do go to the land and I bring the dogs with, they're always in the back here, right? That's sort of why I want a crew cab. <laughs> so that the dogs have more space, but it is what it is. So when they do come along, they're back here and I want my seats covered. Just like the ones in the front here, they're covered as well. There's a hole in that one because I actually took these out of the semi I was driving and there was an armrest that went through that hole. <laughs> so once these wear out, I'll buy new ones. Just got them on Amazon and it won't have that there. Looks kind of ugly, I know. I think this one has it too. Yeah, it's for the armrest. I just, because they didn't come with holes for the armrest, I just cut them in there. So yeah, I, I'm going to have to replace that because that's, that's actually going to drive me nuts now that I've pointed it out. Sort of pointed it out to myself now as well. Uh, I'm gonna have to fix that. This has everything I need for my day in it, from my deodorant to all my camera supplies and mounts, measuring tape, tools, staples, stapler, everything I could possibly need for the day is in here. That's why it looks so big and bulky. Literally got everything in there. <laughs> except, except my cleaning supplies, but these are new. I just got these this weekend. My tire and rim cleaner, my detail cleaner, my wax, and Windex. Those, uh, they get the Walmart bag. Look at that clean concrete. Nice. Oh, it was a long day today. I got off at 6.45. That's yeah, uh, 15 minutes short of 12 hours. Not complaining though, I like the long hours. I don't mind at all. 
Diesel. Where'd you guys get these sticks from? You're leaving sticks all over the yard. I'm gonna have to go around and pick them all up before I before I mow the lawn for the first time. And I've got to find the right fertilizer yet. I found it last year. I forget what the name brand is now, but uh, it's a fertilizer that's meant for uh, high traffic areas, which is pretty much our whole yard. High traffic pet areas and stuff, so that it doesn't the pets don't leave dead spots on the lawn or green spots. And also since it's so high traffic because they're just running around here all the time it still needs to be resilient enough to keep growing normally right so there's a certain fertilizer we can get that'll help with that right diesel absolutely